Welcome to Perthshire Online TV with Vivian Corrigan and Gavin Sign. So, another show, another week, but not quite the show we had planned. I know, we're really disappointed. We were supposed to be out filming at the um, at the game fair out at Schoon Palace on, on Sunday, actually. But, um, it was well, a bit, was completely it? rained off. I know, it's a wee shame. And you can understand why the organisers had to call it off, didn't you? Because it, it really was bad. But, on a, on a good note, because there's so many people in the town in Perth on Saturday, wasn't it buzzing? It was, it was busy. It, it was, was busy. Really it was busy up and down the high street, I tell yeah. you. I was, I was um, quite, quite surprised. But it was nice to was, see that, I it thought. It was. Yeah. And then um, I was out at the Loft Nightclub on Saturday night I at know. the De Rheem makeover competition a fine grand final so um you'll you'll see some of that in this in uh, this week's show and um, well congratulations to donna duran who was the winner two over two thousand pounds worth of makeover treatments fantastic. absolutely fantastic Lovely. it was a, it was a really good night was actually it? yeah it was a really good community night actually i think everybody went everybody went away feeling um I don't know, just a wee bit of sort of heartwarming, Good. heartwarming community stuff. Lovely. Well, that'll be really nice. It'll be great to see the results as well. So when will we see them? It's going to be August. I think they put the reveal, they were going to be doing the reveal date, um, uh, the reveal makeover day, um, about a week after the after the final, but they've decided there's so much that's that's to get done mm -hmm. um, between teeth um, whitening and fitness sessions and whatever else. Yeah. I think they've, they've put it back to August time now, so um, so uh, that'll be, that'll be good. Yeah. Well, let's see how it all went. Mm. Person Online TV likes to get out and about, so we're out on Saturday night, we're at the Loft Nightclub, it's um, almost 7pm, and we're here actually to do some filming for the Dream competition, because it's the grand final of the Dream Makeover competition. It's been whittled down from about over 80 applicants, I think, down to something like 8, and um, all the ladies are here this evening, and somebody's going to walk away, one lucky lady's going to walk away with over £2,000 worth of a makeover prize. But it's not just all about the competition, it's actually quite a social evening as well. It, it, it's great, we've got um, some, a couple of dance acts from Jackie Nichols, JKN Dance Attic, and we've also got um, Emma Pryor of Red Earth's daughter, Rachel Pryor, who's going to be um, singing for us as well. So it's going to be a really great lively night. And we've also got five local A-list judges as well. We've got Steph, Steph Somerville from Copperfields, the hairdressers. We've got Paul Garvey from Burnett Fitness Perth. We've got Kirsty McPherson, the makeup um, artist. We've also got Anne McLean from Sandalwood Shoes and Jackie Nicholl um, from the, the Dance Attic as well. So there are there are a list of uh, celebrity judges and we'll probably catch up with one or two of them later on as well. So here we are at the d -Ream, um competition final at the Loft Nightclub in Perth and I've got, before it starts, I've got one of the judges, um, one of the judging panel here, Anne McLean from Sandalwood Shoes. Hi Anne, how are Good you evening. tonight? I'm very well, thank you, Kevin. And you, you've been chosen as one of the judges, there's five of you. How, how excited are you about the whole I'm thing? I'm very excited and very honoured to be invited. Fantastic, but you're quite used to being in front of the camera as well, aren't you? Because well, a little, a little <laughs> birdie told me that you were a weakest link winner a couple I of years indeed. ago. I was indeed. Very terrifying experience, but great to have won it. And are you going to, you're going to be doing any other competition sometime soon? I would soon, love then? to get a team up to do eggheads. Fantastic. That was be what I'd like to do next. Well, we'll follow, we'll follow the progress on that one. Jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm joined by the lovely ladies of Mark and Posh. How are you tonight, girls? Very, Very well. well, thank you, Gavin. How are you? I'm, I'm doing not too bad at all. I've got I'll, myself spruced up for the I'll evening as well. I must say, we're very impressed. I kind of thought Daniel Craig was here when I walked in. <laughs> Better looking. Okay. I had to this, take a second time. Yeah. They say all the nicest things to me. So it's the it's the competition finale tonight. Um, it's been taken down from what over eighty people down to eight finalists, yes. and some lucky lady is going to be walking away with a two thousand pound prize at the end of the night. I have to tell you, Gavin, it was a very difficult choice. There were some amazing entries, so I have to say there was a few tearjerkers in there, wasn't there, Sarah? I was looking forward to meeting all the nominees tonight as well. Fantastic. Well. It's lights, cameras, action. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
that you can give to the and everything like that. And then Donna came on board about two years ago. She was like, she came on as the manager, and then she's really like organised basically everything for us. She's like, she does everything. Like she organises uh, all the trips that we go on, and she's even like a shoulder to cry on for the parents when the kids are, you know, some of them can be quite handful. So, um, so she's really there for everyone. Um, Donna is also um, contracted to part time hours, but she does full time hours. She does like 50 hours a week for Splash, and it's then how much she works. Um, she also has um, three lovely children. Um, there's Stacey, who's 25, Jamie, who's 21, and Lewis, who's 7. And Stacey has two kids as well. That's PJ, who's 5, and Tommy, who's 6 weeks or more. <laughs> Um, and Jamie's got a um, terminal lung condition um, called cerebral, uh, no, sorry, cystic fibrosis, um, and he's also got ADHD. So Don has been his main carer for the past, like since he was a baby. Um, and they were told last Christmas that he would make it past Christmas 2011. Um, so he's really seriously ill, and they obviously they cherish every moment they can have with him. Um, Donna. Um, also has raised so much money for Cystic Fibrosis UK. Um, she's raised money for children in each. She's raised thousands of pounds for that and Splash on top of that. You may have heard about her backpacks and everything they asked us. Um, and she also has two other jobs on top of Splash. Um, she works as a, she's worked as a carer in different settings since she left school basically. She, um, she's worked in it's a care home um, with it the elderly. Uh, she cared for adults with learning disabilities and she also was a nurse with a nurse and went on to be a manager. Um, just now Donna works, um, she cares for two boys who have a very serious disability called Hunter Syndrome and she looks after them five days a week. Um, <laughs> see, um, <laughs> she also babysits um, during, during the weekends and her spare time so she's basically in from doing all her stuff with Splash. Kick, like, makes the kids key, goes back out, comes to Splash, does the youth club because that run, Splash runs on Monday and Tuesday night and it also runs four days a week um, for five weeks during the summer holidays and October holidays and stuff like that. And then um, basically Donna just does everything for anyone else. She never puts herself first. She's the first one to offer her herself, like her services to you. She mean, if you called her up at five in the morning saying I'm stuck in Glasgow, she'd quite happily come and drive and pick you up. And uh, I think everyone puts so much onto her. I think it'd be really nice for her to have something back because she is under so much pressure from everything. And uh, I think she's really, really inspiring because she's had such an impact on everyone, not just me, but everyone. I think it'd be nice to make a positive impact on her life. So thank you. There you go. My mum doesn't have much time to plan for herself or go to the shop, shopping, etc. She's busy helping me every single day. Um, I could say it was like years ago and develop a bone disease for the muscular process after I had a really bad asthma attack um, and I had to be resuscitated. Um, I was put on a lot of uh, medication, some of which I was sensitive to, which in turn um, started to attack the bones, which was di then I was diagnosed with vascular necrosis. And my mum immediately handed in a rotor skirt for her job that she came to take care of. Um, my mum has been right outside every single step of the way. She's like Wonder Woman, she puts so much into every day. I don't know where she gets her energy from, she's amazing. My mum really has time to get dressed up or to go for a relaxing day with me. She takes two weeks off per year, and the rest of the time she's my super mum. Um, my mum is just awesome, so I would just really, really like for my mum to be pampered for the game. She always treats me like a most proud person on earth, and I think she deserves a break. <laughs> she deserves to feel like a
entries. Two of the judges, there was no, there was no um, second prize, but two of the judges have actually decided to, um, to put a second runner-up prize in. And that's Mina Black and, and McLean. And they have, they have donated £75 vouchers each, £75 for Sandra the Shoes, and Nina's donated a £75 voucher to Red Air, which... Here we are with the Deary Makeover competition winner for 2012, it's Donna Duran. Hi Congratulations. There. Thank you very much. So come on, it's, it's 10 o'clock on the Saturday night. It, it was it was a eight finalists, it was quite a hard job I believe in the, in the um, adjudication. How do you feel about it? Um, just totally gobsmacked, I can't believe it. I just, I do everything for everyone else, so that's just my way of living. So I'm just shocked that somebody wants to do something for me for a change. It's just so nice. And you've got £2,000 worth of beauty treatments, new hairstyle. We're not, we're not going to recognise you in a month's time. I know, what can I say? I might look 20 years younger or something, you never know. <laughs> and who, I think there's somebody probably you want to say thank you to, isn't there? Your nominator. Yeah, I want to say thanks to Louise. Um, she's one of my volunteers from Chip and Splash at work with. Um, she nominated me, but it was really all the volunteers, really, um, because I do so much for them, but that's just the way I am. So it's just nice for them to do something for me. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, listen, congratulations once again. You'll you. You're going to enjoy it. Eh? Thanks, Gavin. Well, I'm delighted we've got Steph Somerville from Copperfields here beside us at the end of the Deary Makeover competition, as well as Copperfields being one of the sponsors. I am, Steph was actually one of the judges as well. So how did it all go? Amazing. It was, so, it was really good fun, but it was really, really difficult at the same time. You always hear that from judges that, oh, it was a hard decision, but hearing like, the heart-wrenching stories from people, it really makes you appreciate what you've got. And it was it was delightful as well, just to be able to give the winner that prize. It meant a lot to her. Yeah, so and I, nice. I think I think she's really appreciating yeah, that as well. Definitely. So, are you and some Copperfields going to be desperate to get your hands on that main Absolutely. of hers? Absolutely. 
freshen it up a bit. I mean, our hair's lovely as well, but it's always nice to do hair for somebody because hair to women is like their crown, you know, so it's yeah, nice to really yeah. make it something special and be able to give them something. And in time for summer and things as well. Not, mm -hmm. that, we, not that we're getting great weather here in Perth at the no, moment. No, not at all, but you never know, you never know. Hopefully. Steph, listen, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much, Gavin. Right, we've got the D-Ream Competition Makeover Competition Manager, Emma Pryor from Red Air. Hi, this, has been, this has been a successful night, isn't it? Do you know, it really has. Actually, we turned the whole thing around in a month. We basically sat here just over a month ago, I think, about five weeks ago, in Santis, and basically made out the format. And it's taken a month, and the response we've had has just been incredible. You know, I really want to do it again next year. Well, I, I think you should do it again. Oh, like, it was a great community event. It brought community yeah. people together that didn't know each other and yeah. I think everybody was just wanting to pat each other on the back and say well done. Definitely. I was downstairs earlier on and so many people were outside who I don't think they knew each other and they were all just mingling together and talking. I was, just the whole night has been absolutely brilliant. Well, Fantastic. Listen, you, well done. Well done. Well done to Donna, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Fairways provide cost-effective HR support, from contracts to recruitment, health and safety to training. Fairways, working with you, for you. Visit fairways-uk.com or call Perth 632 561 for a free consultation. I did it Fairways. Well, you looked like you enjoyed yourself then. I did. I really enjoyed myself on Saturday night, actually, because I was. Um, they asked me actually to be compare for yeah. the um, for the evening as well. So uh, it was really, it was really, really good fun. I, did, I, I mean, the atmosphere was so good, and there was so many people turned up with their between the you know the nominees and the, and the nominators as well. Yeah. It was. I think there was once or twice there was a a few. Um, not quite so dry eyes in the, um, oh, in the house. Oh, was it? Did it all get a bit emotional? I did, actually, yeah. And there was one that, yeah, I just about... You I just about lost, emotional, did I you? just about lost it at one point, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, on a more formal note, because that's the interviews that I do, <laughs> I had Kelman Chambers from George Stubbs Financial Services in the studio, and we chatted about a very topical subject. Is it tax avoidance or is it tax oh. evasion? Let's see what Kelman has to say. Well, I'm delighted to welcome Kelman Chambers Financial Services Director with George Stubbs, who is coming to discuss with us, well, a very topical subject of the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. We're not naming names. Well, maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> so help us out with this one. What is the difference, Kelman? Broadly speaking, tax avoidance is legal. Now, as Jimmy Carr f has recently found out, it may not be the most moral thing to be doing and you may get a lot of bad press, but ultimately it is legal. Tax evasion is strictly illegal um, and the probably best known celebrity for that was Lester Piggott who yeah. spent a small amount of time at Her, Her Majesty's Pleasure because of it. Um, tax avoidance is generally arranging your uh, finances in the way to avoid paying unnecessary tax. Now you get people like Jimmy Carr doing extremely clever, expensive offshore things to save his millions of pounds of tax, but it doesn't need to be like that. Um, we sit with a lot of clients where we turn around and get them to do simple things like making sure they put their money in their risers, making sure any cash is held in cash isers to avoid paying tax on any interest, yeah. however little that may be these yeah. days. Yeah, um, if they're planning for retirement, making sure they use the most suitable pension vehicle to, again, maximise their tax-free growth but also get any tax relief. Um, if people have got an appetite for investment risk, there's various things like venture capital trusts and enterprise investment schemes which have allowed tax reliefs in various ways. Personally, I'm involved quite a lot with people reducing their capital gains tax liability and probably the easiest one, their inheritance tax. Mm -hmm. um, inheritance tax was described by Roy Jenkins as a voluntary tax because it is so easy to arrange your, set up your arrangements in such a way that you pay very, very little. And if you don't, I mean, you, it can cost so much money and have such a huge effect on, on the estate that's left. Well, I mean, inheritance tax is 40% of the capital amount once you get over what's known as the no rate band, currently 325000 Now, that used to be classed as the rich man's tax. Yes, it did, didn't it? It used to be the very wealthy that 
be pay inheritance tax, but that's not the case now. Not now. Now people tend to... Um, oh, there's a lot of people out there with houses well in excess of that amount, so basically any savings they've got will be subject to 40% tax. And, well, I mean, harping back to Roy Jenkins again, his quote was that inheritance tax was only paid by people who distrusted, distrusted their heirs more than they disliked, at that point, um, revenue and customs. Okay. Um, That's a good quote, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it? It's very avoidable and it's very, it's not hugely expensive to avoid doing it. Um, I get quite involved, I also involve quite a few solicitors, setting up trusts, and it doesn't need to be as complex as it sounds. Certainly no, nowhere near as complex as the sort of thing we're hearing at the moment about Jimmy Carr and um, K2s and offshore uh, Jersey trusts and things and like that. And most of us, let's face it, we don't have enough money to have an offshore account. Um, but they're, 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 we still need um, advice on tax, don't we? And, and how to make the most of, you know, if you don't have to pay it, then very you'd much rather so. not. Very much so. And a lot of things are very, very easy to set up and avoid. As I say, I mean, I, I keep harping back to it, but there's so many people who have money sitting in a bank account that haven't used their cash ISA allowance. Mm -hmm. Which, straight away, I mean, an ISA is just a bank account, but it's tax-free, so you pay no, no tax on the interest. Now, these days, interest rates are so low mm -hmm. that any little advantage you can get is worth having. That's true. Um, people who, for instance, own commercial properties and have a pension scheme and pay tax on the commercial property, well, they could have that property held by the pension scheme and subsequently reduce quite a lot of tax payable that way. Yeah. There are a huge amount of ways of actually reducing your tax, and we're not talking about anything contentious that you're going to end up in the Times in the same article as <laughs> Jimmy Carr or various other people. <laughs> you know. um, we're talking about fairly straightforward stuff that can be done really quite easily. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, obviously, we need to come to somebody like you for the best advice, because it is, it is difficult, you know, for, for most of us, you know, it's quite difficult to understand it all. But that was very good, very topical as well. Thanks for sorting that out. And as always, we um, recommend that you consult a reputable financial advisor. Well, that was good, wasn't it? Yep, that's okay. it for this. That's it for this week. But we've got we've got quite a busy week actually because um, you've got one of your adventurers coming in, haven't you? One of your favourites. I do. I've got Mark Beaumont coming into the studio for an interview, so that'll be really interesting, and uh, we can find out all about him and his adventures. And Pearl's got a very important visitor in the Is next it? week as well. Who's yeah. that then? We've got H R H, the Queen. <laughs> so um, she's not coming into the studio, nothing like that, no. but um, I'm sure we'll, we'll uh, manage to catch her out and about and we're um, catching up with the, uh, Liz Grant, the new provost as well, so it's a, it's a busy week. Let's hope the sun shines on oh, Perth. Fingers crossed.